it st still needs the uh, sulfonyl urea. Thank you, sir. Now I would request uh, Professor Venkatram to kindly come and address us. I think I'll just, uh, 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 I think he's also well known uh, in India as well as internationally. So uh, currently he's director Apollo Institute of Blood Pressure Management and Apollo Blood Pressure Clinic. He's director World Hypertension League and he's the editor in chief of Hypertension Journal. And he has been associated with the, uh, uh, with the Dallas Texas uh, Institute and uh, I would request him to kindly, yeah. And he is, uh, again, I, I, I will say personally, because I have known him since I was a resident in Nair Hospital. And since those First days, Dr. P.J. Mehta used to collaborate him, with him. So that's how I know him since my residency days. So uh, that affection is different. And we have, I have learned First over the years from okay. him in the hypertension. And sir, uh, over to you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Parikh. Uh, go good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have a allocated time. I will finish during that allocated time. But during that allocated time, I will deviate from what I wanted to show and say a few things about Chennai and Tamil Nadu. I have always been fond of medical practitioners in Tamil Nadu. I have always been fond of medical practitioners in Chennai in particular. I have said this in many forums due to the changes in the medical field that are happening, some of which are not uh, that great. I always feel that Chennai is the last bastion of integrity of medical science and how to practice it. If the flag falls here, the flag falls everywhere. So I want to offer the tribute to all the doctors here. And I say it publicly. I am from Hyderabad. I was born in Machilipatna, Andhra Pradesh. Doesn't matter because I have to say the way it is. So please continue to safeguard the importance of uh, the medical field and you will do it. Uh, I want to say a few things about blood pressure vascular disease and the new blood pressure goals. And then a trial that was published recently in New England Journal of Medicine, where the conclusions are very, very peculiar. And I want to show that. So ladies and gentlemen, when we treat hypertension, you want to prevent atherosclerotic complications of hypertension. So when you see a patient with high blood pressure tomorrow in your clinic, you're not thinking about hypertensive encephalopathy. You're not thinking about aortic dissection. You are thinking of preventing heart attack and you are thinking of preventing stroke. And those are all due to vascular disease. Now the question is, does high blood pressure independently cause causes vascular disease? Ladies and gentlemen, these are the aortas of young people who had only one diagnosis that was high blood pressure. Can you look at these aortas and imagine what is happening to them as a result of elevated blood pressure? Now I'm going to show a slide which is experiment of the nature. This is, nature has done this experiment called aortic co-optation. Some of you may have occasionally seen aortic co-optation. Aortic co-optation, the blood pressure is high above co-optation and it is normal or low below co-optation, right? Above co-optation, high blood pressure. Below co-optation, low blood pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the aorta above coarctation, thickly populated with atherosclerosis. Below coarctation, nice, it is like a silk, nothing touches it. So ladies and gentlemen, I made my point. High blood pressure causes atherosclerosis, normal blood pressure or low blood pressure, prevents atherosclerosis. 
don't believe those pundits who come on national networks who give commentaries on hindu on times of india that the blood pressure is a made up thing it does not exist don't believe despite their qualifications trust me high blood pressure is dangerous normal blood pressure is desirable now let me take you back to nearly 100 years back nearly 100 years back 100 years back the best blood pressure was shown to be 120 by 80 if you increase the blood pressure by 10 mm of mercury you lose 4 years of life if you increase the blood pressure further you lose 8 years of life if you make the blood pressure 150 by 100 you lose by 16 years ladies and gentlemen can you believe 100 years back we were told that best blood pressure to have is 120 by 80 so please biologically population sciences scientific evidence suggests that blood pressure should be under 130 by 80 anything higher over the period of time is not desirable now all the guidelines now are coming to a reasonable consensus that systolic blood pressure should be less than 130 if possible i am not saying it's possible if possible this is a slide showing that the blood pressures that are less than 130 all shown here less these are the blood pressures less than 130 there is benefit if the blood pressure is more than 130 there's no benefit so why do you want to compromise with the patient 135 is okay 140 is okay come back after 6 months come back after sankranti come back after ugadi why do you compromise anything less than 130 is desirable anything about 130 is not helpful now they say elderly people we we have a culturally we tend to relegate elderly people as if they should not live uh, that's how the culture is they say somebody sees a blood pressure elderly patient with blood pressure of 170 i have seen doctors telling it's normal for your age there's no such thing trust me look at this slide showing that when you lower the blood pressure in the elderly all the cardiovascular complications are reduced so why do you want to condemn the elderly people to get a stroke and heart attack please don't do that as long as they're mobile able to talk able to walk and be part of the society bring the blood pressure to normal as much normal as they can tolerate that's all now you know we have this tendency uh, dr mohan and uh, dr narsingan they treat diabetes and lipids they also have patients who will say sir my sugar is only slightly high and then somebody says nursing and sir i just had went to a wedding last night so my cholesterol is slightly high this slight they use the word slight the the once you use the word slight you lost the patient because they already made up their mind slight now look at the slight increase in blood pressure 120 to 130 130 to 140 what happens to cardiovascular mortality and stroke if you increase the blood pressure from 130 to 140 there is a 56% increase in the cardiovascular mortality there is 100% increase in stroke so don't believe in this little bit slight and slight and all these things because there is what is known as a cumulative effect ultimately it catches up with passage of time so be careful so ladies and gentlemen mr chairman the definition of high blood pressure is 130 by 80 what guidelines you want to follow it is up to you but don't sacrifice the health of the patient majority of cardiovascular events occur under the blood pressure of 140 over 90 please pay care, careful attention to what i said majority of cardiovascular events occur under 140 over 90 that means they are occurring between 130 to 140 between 80 to 90 if somebody has 200 over 120 you don't need anything to tell the patient 
if somebody has 190 or 140, they don't need even the housekeeping person in the hospital will tell Amma, your blood pressure is very high. Okay, so this is 130 to 140, 80 to 90. That's where our challenges are. Now, South Asians and Dr. Mohan in the diabetic field, obviously, he is the one who has contributed to diabetes uh, as a science and population science from South Asia. Once you are South Asian, namely Indian, your cardiovascular risk at any level of blood pressure increases by 40%. When, uh, one more thing I want to tell you. When people use the word South Asia, it's a very political term. It's a very diplomatic term. It means India. We are not talking about Bangladesh. We are not talking about Sri Lanka. We are not talking about Nepal. We are talking about India. But all organizations are very shy. They use the word South Asian. They're not talking about Pakistan. They're talking about you and me. Tremendous increase. Now, Americans also have characterized Asians as a high cardiovascular risk. World Health Organization and WHL, our vice president is here. They have characterized South Asians as high risk. So ladies and gentlemen, our genetic background has already predisposed you to high risk. Now, I want to take another 10 minutes to talk about a, not less than 10 minutes, about a trial that was published in New England Journal of Medicine about two months ago. New England Journal of Medicine is one of the highest so-called impact factors. Its last impact factor is 176. With due respect to India, due respect to all of us, Indian Heart Journal impact factor is 1.4, okay? With due respects. New England Journal of Medicine impact factor is 176. So everybody wants to read New England Journal of Medicine, but please be careful when you read trials in high impact thing. They're publishing it little bit for science, but little bit more for publicity. Trust me, little bit more for publicity. And I'll show you one. In fact, I use the word, which I'm going to write a, a commentary, trials and tribulations. I'll read. Anyway, the recent uh, trial was about uh, chlorthalidone diuretics. This is a slide showing that so many clinical trials which have used chlorthalidone as a diuretic are pivotal outcome trials have shown improvement in cardiovascular outcomes. And Trials comparing hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidone have consistently shown that chlorothalidone at half the dose, half the dose of hydrochlorothiazide is very similar at the half the dose. And these are so many trials which have shown that, trial after trial. And this is a comparison between chlorothalidone and hydrochlorothiazide showing the benefit towards chlorothalidone compared to hydrochlorothiazide. I'm not opposed to hydrochlorothiazide. I'm not opposed to anything. Only scientific evidence. Come, I'm not for or against, but you have to see the scientific evidence when you're choosing a drug. And this is meta-analysis showing the benefits of it. Now, uh, okay. This is a, a major study that was done by Dr. Rajiv Agarwal, who is in Indiana. He wrote an editorial in circulation where he said thiazide like diuretic should be used when initiating or changing diuretic therapy as quoted from National Institute of Health, F Excellence in UK. And in Journal of American Medical Association in 1982, CTD be the only diuretic for step one control of hypertension. So, this comparison has been going on for quite some time. It's not going to end also. And my former uh, colleague, uh, partner under whom I trained, who passed away, he wrote this editorial, Chlorthalidone versus Hydrochlorothiazide, A Tale of Tortoise and a Hare. This is the story that we always know as children, and you know who the winner is, either the tortoise or hare. He wrote a very beautiful editorial. 
Now, there's trials and tribulations, and let me show very, very quickly. And this is a trial in New England Journal of Medicine comparing chlorotaladone to hydrochlorothiazide comparison project. And uh, they compared 25 milligram of hydrochlorothiazide with 12.5 of chlorotaladone. And what they have shown was the conclusions were that chlorotaladone appears to be beneficial compared to hydrochlorothiazide. That was their conclusion. But let us look at the actual results, which are in form of table. When it is a form of table, sometimes we also get confused. So I converted them into figures. So when I looked at the primary outcome, there was no difference between hydrochlorothiazide and chlorotaladone. 10, 10.4% not significant. Chlorotaladone was 12.5, hydrochlorothiazide was 25. Now, when they look in another way, very, very similar. When you looked at pre patients with previous cardiovascular disease, chlorotaladone was slightly better than hydrochlorothiazide, better. Now, patients were taking hydrochlorothiazide for a long period of time, and they were taking chlorotaladone for a short period of time. So one way to look at it is a short-term exposure to chlorotaladone is as good as a long-term exposure to hydrochlorothiazide. This is not in a paper. This is something that I have drawn. Hydrochlorothiazide patients were taking it for a long time, but chlorotaladone group was added in the beginning, in the middle of the study. So one can turn around the tables and say, short-term exposure to chlorotaladone is as good as hydrochlorothiazide. In fact, I had written to the authors about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, despite the headlines, when you break down as a clinician, as a clinician, I, I, I broke this down. I didn't see any major difference, major difference at all. Now, they provided equal protections and the annual 2.4 year data are very similar. And chlorotaladone at low dose is as good as hydrochlorothiazide at full dose. And uh, remember hydrochlorothiazide 12, 12, 25 milligram is not available in India. Am I right, Anil? Yeah, it's not available. So conclusion, another conclusion. Sensational conclusion, the data are not applicable to India at all, right? When you compare 25 and 25 is not available, don't, so don't get too much moved when they say hydrochlorothiazide and this thing. Hydrochlorothiazide 25 is not available in India. Now, one of the investigators uh, who authored the paper and suggested that chlorotaladone might be superior to hydrochlorothiazide in the original paper, in a personal communication to me, exactly a month ago, day after tomorrow, he wrote to me saying that CTD and hydrochlorothiazide have similar effects on primary outcome. Hydrochlorothiazide 25 is equal to CTD 12.5. And he wrote to me saying that it does not change his clinical practice. I have no doubt chlorotaladone lowers the BP better than hydrochlorothiazide at commonly doses used. Why did he write that? Because I sent him pointed questions. These are the questions. And please respond. And he responded. Very nice man. Very good fellow. And another investigator, by the way, this is my last slide. Another investigator who also misled in the official document by the conclusion he wrote to me uh, January 11th, not far ago. Personally, personally, this is now this is an investigator now talking personally, <laughs> which is okay. That's okay. We're all persons. Uh, personally, I believe that better BP is achieved with chlorotaladone at pharmacologically equal doses compared to hydrochlorothiazide. But as Bill Cushman has pointed out. No clinical trial has been demonstrated with hydrochlorothiazide 25 and chlorotaladone, chlorotaladone 25. Doses 
of CTD less than 25 has not been tested in clinical trials in abroad. That is correct. They have not been tested, but they have been tested in India. And they, he also says they probably will never test it in US. So ladies and gentlemen, the reason I'm saying is when you look at the clinical trials, if you really want to do something, try to lead in between and try to do what is best for you and what is best for the patient and the patient's community. So that is the reason why when big, big clinical trials come, there is a major publicity, but you should pay some attention to it. So Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in the time that was allocated to me, I gave you a kind of a very abbreviated and somewhat uh, rewroted application of the recently available data for the best benefit of our brothers and sisters in India. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Professor Venkatram for 